foremost, thanks for everybody uh, for coming out and um, really being a part of this very special day. In our first signing class at the University of Nebraska Kearney, I want to give a special thanks to Chancellor Christensen, um, Dusty Newton, Dr. Paul Plinsky, uh, really the entire athletic community here uh, on, the, on the university, the academic people as well. They did a, a fantastic job of coordinating with us and making the visits here absolutely spectacular. And then also want to give a very special thanks to the Kearney community. Um, and they have just totally embraced what we've been doing here for the past three weeks. Um, and it's been absolutely fantastic to be a part of. Uh, so a special shout out to them as well. As far as our class goes, um, we have, we've really run the gamut as far as position uh, and location on these kids. Our staff did an absolutely fantastic job of going out and finding really the best student athletes available. Uh, for us to go out and recruit. We knew we were behind the eight ball to begin with when we started this process, uh, about eight months uh, to be exact. And they really hit the ground running when they, they all got here. We met for one day and then they were out on the road recruiting. They were in high schools, they were in homes, uh, they were about everywhere that you could possibly be trying to go out and find these very special kids um, to be a part of, of really a, a special foundation of what we're trying to build here at the University of Nebraska Kearney. Uh, it's a wide variety of, of, of kids, um, over 50% are from the state of Nebraska, that was a priority for us when we wanted to go out and, and recruit Nebraska kids and that was something that when we first saw our roster um, that we placed a lot of emphasis on we were able to go out and do that and, and really want to give a special thanks to the Nebraska high school coaches, they extended themselves to us because they knew our situation where we were at uh, in the process of recruiting and really did a great job of, of giving us all the tools that we needed to go out and, and uh, have an opportunity to recruit these Nebraska kids. Some kids that you'll see on the list are from uh, some of our coaches had recruited them when they were at prior institutions and that's a testament to our coaching staff and the relationships that they've built with these, with these individuals, um, our guys really are, are fantastic recruiters, uh, but first and foremost, they're great men. I think that really showed in the recruiting process, their personality, um, their, their sincere and genuine care for the student athlete really came through uh, in, in cultivating these relationships with these young men. And the families and the kids felt that throughout the entire process. So it was a great, great job by them. Uh, and then lastly, I'm, I'm just so thrilled to be standing up here as, as the head coach at the University of Nebraska Kearney and what we were able to do, really do in, in such a short amount of time and uh, I kind of represent the hard work of, of everybody and that goes from, from getting hotel rooms to putting things out on social media to uh, organizing the recruiting visits to really everything that we've done uh, in the entire process is a testament to, to what this university is about progressively moving forward for the future and really setting a foundation uh, for us to be an out absolutely outstanding institution of higher education um, moving on. So with that, we'll open up for questions. Let's start with the process. Mm -hmm. When you started evaluating the talent that you had here and your needs, what, what were some of the things that kind of stuck out as needs that you needed to address with this recruiting class? Well, I think the first thing that we just saw initially uh, when we really evaluated our depth chart was um, the depth at positions. We knew that we needed to build depth really at all spots. Uh, there, there were a couple in particular. Offensive line was one where we knew we needed some bodies to come in. Uh, the defensive backfield. Uh, as well, and then so those were those were kind of some spots, tight end um, as well, just the, the top three where we really identified where we needed to bring some kids in and um, more more numbers uh, than anything else, and that's kind of what we focused on with uh, with our recruiting. But you know, all across the board, we needed we needed guys um, because, and that's the one great thing we graduated ten seniors last year, which really isn't a whole heck of a lot. But then underneath that are our freshman and sophomore classes that we didn't have a whole lot of people in those classes and so you know to bring in 40 kids um, has been absolutely fantastic for, for our staff and really building the foundation of not only depth but you know the quality in this group as well was, was a big deal for us. How many kids were targets um, from the previous staff that you decided to continue to pursue and how many were yours? For your staff? You know, I, I, I really can't answer that question. We kind of got in here um, and, and we, we had a little bit of a list 
uh, initially when we got here, but for the most part we kind of started from scratch and started our own evaluations for, for kids all across the board, and that's why it was so important to develop those relationships with those high school coaches um, so they could really kind of get us get our foot in the door for, for a lot of these kids. And um, So as far as that we carried over, there were a few, uh, but for the most part it was, it was really the guys kind of going out on their own and, and identifying those kids that we felt would be a good fit for, uh, for Loper Nation. You talked about tight ends. Mm -hmm. Previously, they were referred to around here as fancy tackles. Is this, sure. Is this a reflection and a change of offensive philosophy? I, I would think so. Uh, tight ends are, are a big part of what we're going to do in, in our offense. I don't think you can have enough big, strong, fast guys running around uh, whatever position they play. And, you know, tight ends is, uh, in our offense is one of those hybrid positions where they have to do a little bit of everything. They'll line up in the backfield. They'll line up attached on the line of scrimmage. They'll be in the slot. They'll be backside of a three-by-one set. So we do a lot of different things with, with those guys. And so you have to be a special athlete to play tight end uh, in this offense. And the guys that we identified and got are definitely fit the bill for that. Of the 40 recruits that you brought in, how many do you expect to make an immediate impact? I know you want to redshirt a lot of these right. kids. You know, and that, that's a great question. Um, with with the situation that we're in, um, you know, we're we're all, all about playing our best players. And if a kid is mentally and physically ready to perform at the high level that the MIAA demands then uh, and then obviously he has to want to do that but then we're going to put him out there and, and let him swing away at it. Now some kids come in with a preconceived notion that they want a red shirt uh, and that's perfectly okay. We will absolutely abide by their wishes but if a kid wants to come in and, and compete and see where he's at and uh, kind of where he falls on the depth chart then we're going to go ahead and, and let him have that opportunity and, and uh, there will be some kids in this group uh, that will be able to come in and do that. You know, you never really know, Dave, until the bullets start flying and you put them out there and they have to learn an entirely new offense or defense and terminology is different and the people that they're playing with are, are different. But I think a lot of these kids have the ability to come in and make it, make that immediate splash, if you will. On the other side of the ball, who jumps off the page is maybe the biggest get? You know, it's it's tough to single kids out um, specifically and, and that's not something that we normally do. Uh, I think there's, a, specifically at the defensive back position, uh, that group as a whole is very, very talented. Uh, the quarterbacks that we brought in all have, have top-notch skill uh, and are athletes that can do things both in the run game and the pass game. Uh, and then our offensive linemen, all that, that we got are athletes. They're not your prototypical 6, 7, 300-pound offensive linemen. They're guys that... Uh, you know, have the ability to get up on level two and, and block level two defenders and get out on the perimeter and do some different things like that that, that requires our uh, offensive linemen to do in our offense. So, you know, those, those kind of positions right there, and, and they're all good, uh, but, you know, they're, those are kind of specifically the ones that, that we're excited about. You mentioned the quarterbacks. How big of a need was it to get some more bodies, talented bodies in here at that position? You know, we've, we've got talent there now, uh, and that's one of the things that we're really excited about is to actually go and work with our football team now that the recruiting process is kind of winding down. Um, you know, we can focus on the kids that are, that are actually in our program now. Um, but we've gone and evaluated the film, not only from games last year, but also from practices to kind of see what we have talent-wise on our football team. And, uh, you know, there is talent here all the way across the board, and, you know, quarterback specifically. Uh, Bronson did a, did a fantastic job last year in, in what he was asked to do. And so, you know, those are things that, that we're excited to actually put our hands on the kids that are here and uh, get to work with, with off-season conditioning and then catapult that into spring ball. How much of a scramble was the last 10 days to a week? You know, <laughs> and today even. Um, and it, it is a little bit because you always get those – Everybody gets excited when they come on a visit, and you get those commits that uh, commit right after their exit interviews or while they're on their visit and things like that, but then you have to hold on to those commitments for the last week or however many days uh, that it is, and then, you know, we actually had some phone calls this morning where um, had to hold on to some commitments as well, and so it, it always makes for a, a stressful but a very exciting period in the life of a coach uh, because there's there's paperwork, there's weather, there's moms and dads that get sick, there's there's all sorts of things that come up so you never really know when you're dealing with 17 to 18 year olds what kind of situation or what's running through <coughs> at, at any point in time 
uh, in those days. So it, it's, a, it's a stressful but exciting time. Um, it has been one that, you know, I give a lot of credit to our staff. They've done an absolutely fantastic job of making these kids feel very warm and welcome here at the University of Nebraska Kearney. They did a great job of, of going out and finding them. They're, they're great recruiters and a lot of the credit goes to them. How many full rides did you give and how many did you split up? I didn't give any full rides. Um, you know, in, in the Division II level, uh, it's really, it's almost impossible for football to give full rides and the fact that you only have, you know, essentially 32 scholarships for us uh, this season and you, ha you essentially have anywhere from 80 to 95 guys on some kind of scholarship and so, you know, it's roughly about of a third that each guy's on and then as they get into the program and progress throughout the program and, and are taking care of their academics and making moves on the depth chart, then you always save money for those guys to go up and bust. But as far as freshmen coming in on full rides, I, I actually don't even think we gave a half to anybody. That's just the nature of the beast. And in the Division II model, um, parcels are really the, what you have to do with football. And that's kind of what we did. And, and I, again, identified our kids. And it's all about those relationships that, and the fit that they felt when they came here uh, with our coaching staff and, and the academic community as well. I know you're. In, I know that you're interested in, in bringing in high school kids, but mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts about maybe having to shore up maybe another position or some spots with maybe some JUCO sure. kids later on? Yeah, and you know we we have <coughs> we have some money left in the bank, um, and that was one thing that we wanted to make sure that we did after spring ball because that's when you get a great evaluation of your kids with specifically where you're at and you know that we know you know kind of coming in depth that the offensive line position was was an issue we were able to bring uh, one junior college transfer in at, at semester who's already enrolled and then probably going to bring another one in uh, after spring practice uh, possibly another defensive lineman but it, it kind of depends on where kids are at after after spring ball and you know specifically our depth chart and how it looks and also with injury situations as well you never quite know what's going to go on in spring unfortunately injuries are, are a part of this great game that we play and um, you know some are, are take longer in the re recovery process than others but uh, for the most part we're going to really save that money for our evaluation period after spring break and then see where we're at or spring ball excuse me. With only one running back is that also kind of the, the switch to a, a more pass off happy offense? No, that that actually was probably more so uh, what we had on a roster. Um, you know, we have I think seven kids on our roster right now that are in that tailback position, and so by position you only have so much money, um, and you kind of have to stay in balance with with what you have allotted for for each spot. And so that was kind of what we had available for. Uh, that position and um, the amount of money was we knew we were only probably going to squeeze one out of this this recruiting class and we had some really talented guys on campus and, and Thomas was just one that he uh, he committed and we're, we're really happy he did and then we had to go back and unfortunately cut some some kids that had been on campus for for visits. Did any of your kids have any offers from D1 schools that were um, they, they were kind of torn or that maybe preferred walk on or if they got a scholarly offer somewhere? Absolutely. Um, you know, and that was, again, going back to the fit and feel and, and the outstanding job that everybody really did uh, pitching in on the recruiting effort. There were none of these kids uh, just had one offer. Uh, they all had other options for where they wanted to go to school or where they could have gone to school. And so there was, there was a recruiting battle for each and every one of these kids. Um, there wasn't anybody that would just walked into our door and, and threw themselves down and said this is where we're going. We had to go out and fight for these kids and convince them that this was the place to go and um, you know shared our vision for the future for what we're what we're building and what's already here and uh, you know I think once they get, got out to campus and really felt what we were trying to do um, you know they got a glimpse of that and, and that's why you know their names on the on the dotted line for us. The um selling job that you and your coaches did, you know, I think it usually comes down to how the athletes feel about the coaching mm -hmm. staff. But aside from that, what might have been some of the things that benefited you the most that sure. attracted them to you? Know, Absolutely. Coach? Well, you know, we always try to get feedback uh, from our exit interview. So it's actually the last thing that we do is we sit down with moms and dads and the kids and, and ask them how their visit went, explain or answer any questions that they might have. And one of the most resounding things that 
that we heard in those exit interviews was the, the perception of, of Kearney and, and the Kearney community and when they got out here and, and they saw you know the businesses, how big the town was uh, and how progressive that it has been um, was really a selling point for, for a lot of us. You know the Kearney community compared to other MIAA schools uh, you know, if you want to compare apples to apples, Kearney's a fantastic town for a lot of those other um, communities. And so that really was a, a difference. Um, Dusty Newton and the academic professors that they were able to meet with all throughout campus uh, played a big role in, in these kids' decision. They all want to, essentially, that's why they're going to a place of higher education is, is to get that degree. They're students first and, and athletes second. So their, the, their staff did a phenomenal job of really explaining um, each individual academic major and answered all the questions that those kids had going through the, pro the process. Dr. Polinsky got to share his vision with each recruit that came in here um, and for an administrator to take the time out of his busy schedule to come in and talk to every recruit that, that was here was a, was a big deal to moms and dads and also to, to the student athletes to not only hear it from the coaching staff but also you know, to hear it from the administrative level was, was a huge deal. Um, and, and just the campus in general. There was a perception that once you get west of, of Lincoln is, is essentially Wyoming and that's, that's not the case at all. And so people got out here and they saw what was going on. Um, they were definitely intrigued and then got to know the coaching staff and, and what these guys and their makeup is all about. And essentially that kind of sealed the deal for a lot of these kids. You talk about that east side of Nebraska disconnect You've got a lot of kids that you were able to get from Lincoln and mm -hmm. the Omaha areas. How easy was it to go into those places? And Because I know that's a place that's fertile ground, and right. a lot of our competition is able to recruit in those right. areas. Right. Well, <laughs> easy and recruiting usually don't go hand-in-hand hand, um, at all. And so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily easy. Now it's, it's great to go. You hop on 80, and you can get to all those spots. Um, you know, but we had to get kids out for visits. That was the biggest deal. If you can get those high school kids just out for a visit and you can get them on your campus uh, and you can really show them what our community is all about, what our university is all about, share our vision uh, as an athletic department with them, then it absolutely blows their mind for what their perception is. And you know, to make those inroads to the Omaha, the metro area, uh, and then also into Lincoln, I think is just going to play dividends. Uh, really going into the future with with a lot of these kids because now we've got some of those guys on our roster um, and are bringing in this freshman class and, and I think kids are going to recognize that and word of mouth is going to spread that these guys are coming out here and they're having a fantastic experience and it's just going to continue to grow those relationships with with the eastern part of the state. A couple more questions. Compare your excitement level for this class compared to what you have recruited at Central Missouri last. Well, it's, it's funny you say that. I was we were actually just kind of down in our war room uh, about 30 minutes ago, and, and everybody was on their phones and, and they were talking to kids, and uh, you know I was kind of like that proud papa sitting at the end of a, a dinner table, um, just really more gratifying than anything else to to see all these the hard work that our staff has put in, um, you know, and they've been away from their families. Some of them haven't seen their families uh, since the beginning of January, you know, and the dedication and commitment that these guys and the sacrifice that not only them but their families have put into this whole process uh, as well. Being in my seat, being a head coach for the first time, you know, you recognize those things and you recognize not only their commitment to it but the family's commitment to it. and. Uh, I can really appreciate everything that's gone into the entire process and to bring in 40 student athletes um, and to be a part of that is, is something extremely special. We're going to recognize this class and remember it for the rest of our lives uh, because it is something that we were so behind and we were able to make up so much ground in such a short amount of time. I think it's something that's truly remarkable and uh, it, all credit is spread around so much to, to everybody and um, I'm just happy to be a part of it.